Right, I think I'm on air this time. I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, I'll be honest with you. Uh, very good afternoon and welcome along to this weekend's weekend webcast. This is attempt number two. Uh, so good afternoon, welcome along. Thanks very much uh, for joining us from your friends here in Staines. And uh, I'm sure a number of, a number of you uh, know that I had a week of, of holiday, but I am back in the showroom and it's, it's good to be here. Uh, this week, I'm going to have a look through a couple of items uh, in front of me. Uh, some of Richard's top picks, um, and also have a quick look around the U shelves as well. Our U shelves are, uh, are bursting at the seams with more to come, so uh, we'll have a look uh, at some of those as well. In fact, we will uh, we'll end this little segment with a used item, which I want to bring uh, make you aware of. So um, let's start. Uh, let's start with a radio. Let's start with um, with the Yaesu FT3. Uh, this is, of course, uh, Yaesu's. Uh, BHF, UHF, uh, C4FM and FM handheld, built-in GPS for things like APRS as well. Uh, nice large battery too, and of course with Bluetooth on board as well. Just want to uh, just highlight the fact we've got them in stock. They're a lovely radio. If you're, if you're after something uh, with a nice touch screen, color touch screen uh, for C4FM, maybe going for going into a hotspot or a local repeater on C4FM, uh, an absolutely perfect choice. Uh, and uh, actually, if you're going to go for an FT3, you might decide you want a little headset to go with it. Uh, we also have in stock at the moment the uh, HDH set of um, headsets from Heil, the Handy Talkie uh, headset, as they call it. Uh, we do these for all, all, all uh, the uh, manufacturers. This is the double-sided. They also come in a single-sided variant too. Uh, if you go for the i version, it'll work with things like the uh, all of the Icon range of handhelds, as well as the uh, the IC705. Um, uh, Kenwood obviously available too, and if you go for the Kenwood one, that would also work with things like Wuxun uh, and also TYT and yes, Balfang too. Uh, so that's the the Heil uh, headsets in stock as well. I've uh, got a couple of dummy loads from Microset. Just want to uh, bring to your attention. We've got the uh, CF30. A uh, nice small little uh, dummy load, uh, good for DC up to a gig uh, with uh, an N-type on it. Nice to see an N-type being used uh, by Microsoft there. Uh, so that's uh, that's a smaller one, slightly larger if you want to be putting a bit more. Sorry, uh, should I said uh, that's 30 watts um, uh, continuous into that one. You want to have a bit more power going in. And then they also do the 300 watt version of the same. Again, it's uh, an N-type connector on it. Uh, again, it's uh, DC through to one gig um, at uh, 300 watts rated. So that's uh, those are in stock available as well. Again, don't seem to see many, many no, very many uh, dummy loads with N types on. So it's nice to see. Um, I will say hello to some people in the chat. Uh, afternoon to, to Andy as well and to John there as well, uh, and also to Tony who says there is a 705. There is a 705 coming up. Tony, shouldn't you be on holiday or something? Um, also, uh, we've got the CN901 um, in stock at the moment as well. Uh, of course, the nice large uh, cross needle uh, meter from Daiwa. Uh, these have been around for ages, or certainly a version of these have been around for ages. Tried and tested, proper PEP hold as well. Um, it's uh, selectable on the back. I'm not sure whether you'll see that or not, but you've got switches on the back. It would turn on the backlight and the PEP hold. Of course, you do need uh, DC input in order to do the PEP hold and the light. Uh, if you just want to use it for uh, basic uh, metering, no DC input required. Uh, and good, this is the HP versions. This is good for to up to uh, 250 megs. There is the uh, VN version, which obviously has N types on the back uh, and goes up to, um, uh, up to I think it's 500 megs uh, off the top of my head. Uh, and being uh, the HP version goes up to two kilowatts, this particular one. Uh, there is the, uh, the three kilowatt version as well. So if you are um, experimenting with some serious high power stuff, uh, then do go for the HP3, uh, which adds the, uh, adds the capability to handle up to, uh, to 3K. Uh, also in stock, uh, new in and uh, in a very new colorful box, uh, new from Anytone, colorful box, uh, the Anytone uh, AT779. Uh, this is their dual band 2 and 70, uh, pre-programmed by us, a uh, small portable radio, mobile radio, I suppose, with the correct term. Uh, with a nice sort of color screen, nice big knob there as well. Uh, John runs one of these pretty much every day in his car. He do it work exactly the same as I say, pre-programmed by us with all of the, the UK FM repeaters. Uh, already ready to go. If you're after something, just take it out of the box and plug it in and get going, then that's uh, exactly what you uh, what you need. Um, 
So uh, afternoon to, to Gerard from Sunderland and to 2E0EUG. Uh, so you don't want to drop that in your toe. I don't want to drop anything in my toe. Um, and to, to uh, Terry, who says his antenna was struck by lightning last Sunday. I'm sorry to hear that, Terry. Um, what's the ideal 270 to replace an X30? An X30. That would be the exact replacement. If you want to go something a little bit better, Terry, you can always go for an X50. Adds a little bit more length, adds a lot more performance. Um, so that would be good. Uh, if you want to go for a two-piece antenna, then maybe the X200 or the X300. If you want to add another band, go for a V2000. Uh, there's lots of options there, uh, Terry. Give us a call. I'm sure we can sort you out on that one. Uh, afternoon to, to Barry as well. Hello, Barry. Uh, G6JMX. Hello, nice to, nice to see you there. Uh, and to Wayne in Wakefield, who says he's loving his 991A from us. Well, I'm sure. Uh, why wouldn't you be? I had a customer in earlier on today uh, who was musing that... Uh, and he loved his 9 on 1A as well. So uh, keep your comments coming. I'm going to come back to those in just a second. Um, I want to bring you this. Um, we've got a, a W3 EDP uh, in stock, uh, which, I mean, it's not it's a bunch of wasps. I'm not really going to, much I'm going to show you. But have a look in front of our website. The W3 EDP, if you're in a small uh, space, if you've got a sort of a house with, with no garden space at all, that might be the antenna for you. The idea of it is you wrap it around the house. So you go up the side of the house, so up and over the roof and back down the other side. And they will work 83 to 10 meters. Uh, 67 foot long, you've got a phasing line section of 17 feet. Um, maximum input power of 400 watts, although it is worth saying that being that close to the house, you might not necessarily want to run that much power, uh, but they are available in stock at the moment. Um, we kind of bought them in as, uh, as a little bit of experiment. So if um, they are sort of um, competitively priced on the website, that's the W3EDP antenna. Um, not a week goes by without us mentioning 4091s, new 4091 um, is available from stock. Uh, this is the one we've been doing for a little while. Keep uh, your eyes peeled because we've got a higher power version coming very soon. Uh, but um, I mean, uh, everyone knows about NFED Halfwave now. Good, won't mention it anymore. Uh, just to say that we have still got the uh, the 50 meter rolls of the Dipoflex in stock. So, um, as I say, if you go for um, a 49 to one transformer and uh, you go for a length of wire, cut 10 meters off this, keep the 10 meters for a rainy day when you might want to make, know, make a 20 meter dipole or something, but use 40 meters of that with that and uh, you'll be getting going on every harmonic, harmonically related band, if I get my teeth in order today, uh, between 80 and 10 metres. Uh, and finally, a couple of um, West Mountain Radio stuff to just present. You've got the Rig Runner range in stock. This is the 4005. Uh, so this is uh, one input, five outputs um, with a 40 amp fuse. Each output is fuse, that's nice. So you've got a 40 amp input fuse. And you've got two 25 amp output fuses, 110, 15, and one, one amp. Um, if you want to do your DC distribution properly at home, that's what you need. Supplied with uh, a short length of DC cable with ring terminals on one end, power poles the other, and also supplied with a little packet of power poles as well. So if you want to get going, the 4005 um, from us comes with everything you need to get going. If you want to run a system where you're also charging a battery at the same time, um, or if you want to have a sort of a bit of a battery boost, um, then we have uh, this in stock, which is the uh, Isopower Plus. So the way this works, I'm going to bring it around just so I can show you. So it's, it's marked up for use as if you're in a, a vehicle. So you've got um, your input here. So that's coming in from maybe a 12 volt supply on your car. You've got the output to a battery, so you can charge a battery, maybe just a, a slab in the back of the car maybe, and then you've got your output. The, uh, the nice thing about this, of course, is that for all the while that your engine's switched on, you're gonna be charging up the, the battery, and then as soon as you turn your, your engine off and you lose the, the power from the, uh, uh, maybe if you've got this plugged into your ignition, say, um, then you're gonna lose that, and it's gonna flip over onto the battery to keep your radios running without draining down your vehicle battery. Of course, that's, uh, that's always the risk, isn't it, when you're, uh, when you're running uh, that. Uh, it's, um, I say, everything you need comes in the box with it. Um, it up to, I handle up to 40 amps uh, through it, which is more than enough for driving most HF radios. Uh, also uh, available in stock, uh, the DX Commander Poles. We've got both the uh, 10 and the 7 meters, I believe, in stock. 
don't have to double check that. Certainly 10 meters available from stock uh, from Callum. Uh, and I understand he's, um, he's got some new uh, exhibition poles, which I'm sure we'll be getting very soon. Uh, and finally, before we move on to a little bit of use, uh, we've got uh, the Serio. If you're after a four meter antenna, the Serio CX468 um, is a low band VHF uh, antenna. Uh, you can tune it to work anywhere between 68 and 73 megs, of course. Perfect for the 70 megs uh, amateur band. Uh, they are, I mean, they've been around for years, those antennas. The only thing to note, if you are going to buy one of those Sirius antennas, is you do want to just put a little bit of sealant around the bottom of them, just stop any water wicking in, uh, as can happen. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, a great antenna, great for 4 FM. Uh, obviously, you are vertically polarized rather than horizontally polarized. But if you've got maybe a 7300, new DX10 or 101, and you want to have a bit of a play on four meters, uh, without too much expense, the Serio is definitely a good antenna to do that with. Uh, just have a, a quick look back at uh, back at the chat. Um, uh, let's have a look. See, uh, seventy six ten um, uh, two zero EUG says he's loving his seventy six ten he got from us. I had it a few months and zero problems. A great radio. I absolutely agree. Uh, Steve uh, G H J U T. Uh, good afternoon to you. He says, um, is a remote ATU better than an internal ATU? Oh, well, that's an interesting question there, Steve, because technically speaking, yes. So and the, the advantage with a remote ATU, as in an antenna tuner you're going to put near the feed point or at the feed point of the antenna, is that you're only tuning the antenna, and therefore it's a true 50 ohms along the coax. Where antenna tuners inside radios or in the shack, um, full foul, or full Elizabeth foul, is you're also tuning the length of coax. So that's then forming part of the antenna system. Don't get me wrong, if you've got a, a, an antenna that's nearly resonant, i.e. you know, you've got a dipole that's slightly off, an internal tuner inside the radio is going to bring that in and make it workable for you. But a remote ATU, particularly if you're running something like a long wire antenna, that's always going to be the best solution. Uh, if you are running a long wire antenna, then uh, look for the CG3000 that we do. Uh, that's a great auto antenna tuner for, for remote purposes. Uh, and there's also the, um, uh, the LDG uh, RTRC100, which we have available in stock, and a fantastic price at the moment too. So that's definitely uh, uh, one to look for. Uh, hi to John uh, in Germany, uh, DJ6JH. Um, and he says, how about a look at the mag loops by Gaz? We can get Gary on that, no problem at all. And what is your audio settings on the 705 for TX? I think that might be another video idea there, Gerard. We, we'll get onto it, but uh, personally, I run a little bit of um, little bit of compression and generally set the microphone to about 30% if I'm just using the normal fist mic with my 705. Talking of a 705, uh, which uh, I was, I, I said we we're going to start with a bit of used, and our bit of used is a 705 uh, in our used section at the moment. It's being supplied uh, with the tripod, as you see. I'm going to uh, do my best to uh, to hold it still for you. Uh, so this is um, just gone onto the web today. So it's the, uh, of course, the latest and the greatest portable from uh, Icom, HF 6, 2, and 75 watts on uh, its internal battery. 10 watts if you put it into uh, or put it on an external power supply. Uh, it is supplied, I say, with the, the nice tripod. Uh, it's uh, fully boxed and complete. Uh, it's on the website right now for 1099. So if you are after um, uh, an IC705 and you want to save yourself, you know, a bit of money, save yourself a couple hundred pounds, uh, then that's definitely a, a good option. Uh, we've said it before, we've said it again. You know, you know, I've got one, Gary's got one, uh, Mark here has got one as well. So. Definitely loved by us here. Right, let's have a quick look around the rest of the use section because as I said, we are bursting at the seams this afternoon. So uh, uh, we'll do our, uh, do our best to, uh, to, to present everything to you in a, uh, in a timely manner. Uh, let's start, we mentioned, uh, someone mentioned the 7610 in the chat. Let's start with the 7610. Of course, this is uh, ICOM's um, SDR flagship, isn't it really? 100 watts out the back. Uh, HF and six meters. This one fully boxed and uh, and complete with everything you'd expect. Mic manual, DC cable. Uh, yours for just two four nine nine. So you're going to save yourself five hundred pounds off what you pay for a new one. And let's be honest, by the time it's in your shack, by the time it's set up on your bench, you wouldn't know it's used, would you? Really, it's uh, it's absolutely in pristine condition. Not a mark, scratch, scratch, dink, or anything like that. So seventy six ten. 2499 fully boxed. 
Let's stay with the ICOM theme. We'll go down to an IC7100. Uh, it's HF6, four meters on this as well, uh, as well as two and 72. Uh, perfect uh, for mobile, perfect in the, uh, in the shack as well. Uh, it's just an all round good radio. Uh, if you're limited on space in your shack and, uh, and you've only got a tiny little space to operate, this could be the radio for you. You could just pop that head unit on the desk, hide the, uh, the main body of the radio away, maybe with a, a tuner as well. Uh, you could do use one of the, uh, one of the mat tuners, uh, one of the icon mat tuners would work very well. Uh, 799 gets you that and it will just look absolutely fantastic. Uh, also uh, in stock, let's let's go back a generation from the 7100. Let's go back a generation to the IC7000. Of course, renowned for its color screen and uh, the, um, the the fact that uh, it was a full color screen back in the days where radios didn't come with full color screens. Uh, HF6, uh, 2 and 70, uh, a lovely all-band radio uh, in all mode as well. 100 watts out on HF and 6, uh, 50 watts out on uh, on two meters, about 20 watts out on 70 cents. A good option if you're after uh, an all-band uh, mobile from ICOM. Um, and also the, uh, the AT7000 too. So if you're after a, a, an integrated tuner for the 7000, of course it doesn't come with one, uh, then that could be a good option as well. Uh, 125 for the tuner, ready up at 649. So again, you're, you're going, saving them. Uh, in fact, there's another 7000. Aren't we lucky? Got two 7000s. Another one just out of there. Again, I believe both boxed, both in very good condition. Certainly this one looks like it's in fantastic condition. Uh, also, uh, this one's slightly more expensive. I think it must have just be in a slightly better condition. Uh, yeah, I can have a look. Looking at the top of both of them, slightly better. 699 for that one. Uh, let's go up. Let's go up here. We've got a, uh, a Kenwood TS590SG. This is the special 70 amp. Am I do apologise. My, my YouTube app decided to just close then. Uh, so this is the 70th anniversary edition, uh, 1499. It is a limited edition one. It is, you know, there's one of only about uh, 200 of these made. Um, they look fantastic with that gold detailing and that piano black finish. 1499 gets that one. If you're not interested in uh, necessarily the, the limited edition aspect, obviously it's going to work exactly the same uh, as a normal 590SG. Here is one, uh, £999. Of course, it's a 590S uh, with improved DSP, with the CWD code and also with the, uh, with the improved uh, screen as well. But uh, there is a 590S too. Uh, it is like the lineup of generations here, isn't it? It's, uh, it's 570DG, uh, uh, 590S, 590SG, 70th anniversary. That's, that's quite nicely done. Uh, FT897D, if you're after a shack in a box from Yacy, uh, this is a great option. I know many people still run 897s. And they, are, they just work brilliantly well. If you're after something portable, something that feels rugged, something that doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart, uh, then that's definitely what you need. £649 gets you that one. Uh, it does come with its box, the book, the mic, the manual. Um, and a DC lead, of course. That's, uh, that's that. Uh, some mentioned uh, Acom. Uh, we do have an Acom 1010 in stock at the moment. This is, of course, one of the newer ones because it's got that, uh, uh, that uh, all black finish on the front. Uh, 1499 gets you that one. Uh, of course, Acom 1010. A very popular amplifier. I mean, brand new. They're going to set you back about eighteen hundred pounds. This one, fourteen nine nine, seven hundred watts uh, out typically. Uh, so if you're, um, if I just, I'd log at four hundred watts. Let's be honest with you. Uh, a good all band um, amplifier. They work right well. They will handle a um, a three to one SWR without any bother at all. So if you if you've got a uh, chew, uh, an antenna, sorry that is just slightly off or, or slightly high SWR wise, as long as it's less than three to one, this will cope with it. Also got MFJ 994B in stock. This is uh, the 600 watt tuner from MFJ. You can also buy the appropriate interface cable for your radio. It's 349 gets you that one. Uh, is boxed uh, with, the, uh, with the packing, etc. And what else can I bring you? Oh, I've got a 904 b and also a 994. This is just a slightly older version, uh, but for all intents and purposes, exactly the same internally. Uh, got a, an FTDX10, of course. We mentioned this when we talk about four meters and that serial antenna. Uh, this is, of course, HF6 and 4 from Yeezy. Uh, it uh, can't have been used to them. I've actually still got that uh, little bit of plastic over there. Uh, that's 1299. Uh, you're going to save yourself um, 
Oh, you're saving yourself about uh, 250 pounds, aren't you there? A good, uh, good saving there as well. And uh, John wanted me to mention this to you. It's the ICOM IC706 Mark II. Now this one is being supplied with the, uh, um, uh, with the separation cable. So if you want to remote head this in the car, uh, this has got the separation cable with it, which I think most people know at this point are rarer than hen's teeth. So it is boxed, £449 for the 706 Mark II. And we've also got ICOM AH4, the, uh, uh, the ATU in stock. And um, this is great if you're running any ICOM built in the last sort of 30 years or so. Uh, pop, a, pop a long wire on the top and uh, run, the, uh, run the cables down into your radio. Uh, nice thing is, of course, it's got that four pin Molex that ICOM have used for years and also a PL259 as well. It draws all of its power from the radio, so you don't need to worry about running external power cables. All goes down through the two cables it's supplied with. Uh, a great choice if you're running a long wire. I say if you're not using uh, ICOM, you can use the CG3000. John is hovering. Sorry to interrupt. I've yeah. Done some I've just done it. It's got a mobile bracket and very rare the separation cable. Oh, I've just mentioned separation okay. cable. It's also got a mobile bracket as well. Thank you very much, John. Uh, there we go. Mobile bracket included in that 706 as well. Uh, FTDX 3000. I'm just going to mention the last few bits here. FTDX 3000. Of course, this is the baby 5000, as we've always said. 100 watts, uh, three antenna sockets on the back. Uh, one of them you can select to be a, a receive-only port, which is really nice. Uh, so if you've got a sort of receive-only loop or something similar, uh, then that's uh, a good option for you. Of course, it's also got built-in sound card with rig control as well over USB. So if you want to run things like FT8 or, uh, or PSK31. Does anyone still run PSK31? I, I want, do you know what? I might, I might just try and have like one QSO on PSK31 when I get home. Just see if I just see if everyone was on. No. <laughs> so anyone, does Digipan still exist? Uh, Ten nine nine for the uh, DX three thousand uh, in in good condition, boxed as well. And let's go over here for the final couple of items. Uh, FT four fifty D five nine nine, a good uh, HF six meter radio, hundred watts out. Uh, many of you, many of you will know that I started with a four fifty D. Um, I bought one long before I worked here. Uh, it was uh, the, my everyday radio, um, and in fact, it's still in the family. My dad's now got it, so uh, it's uh, definitely still in the family. This one, 599, uh, and a couple of flex bits as well. I've got a 6600M for 4499. Of course, that's uh, the, uh, the sort of the flagship with the front panel from, uh, from Flex with the uh, built in ATU and the heaps of slice receivers. And we've also got uh, the 6300. Uh, with the ATU install, which is always an option on the 6300, and uh, we have upgraded it to the version 3 software. So in the very latest uh, firmware, uh, very latest software there. And uh, very quick, finally, ELAD GI Red, uh, in stock 799, ICR 8600 at 1999. Lots of uh, good stuff, and I'm sure you're, you're, you'll agree. A couple more 590 SGs just over there as well. Uh, so lots of uh, interesting, um, lots of good stuff on our EU section at the moment. Can't quite remember where. Oh, why don't we just give you a quick uh, mention of this. Uh, the uh, Ameritron, uh, the AL1200 with the uh, upgraded to a GS35B uh, valve inside. Uh, a good amplifier. It would easily idle along at, um, at 400 watts. Uh, you... Um, PEP will generate anywhere between sort of 1.6 and 1.8 kilowatts. Uh, it's uh, definitely a good uh, good amplifier and uh, been rebuilt extensively by uh, uh, Krazy, our high power RF engineer here on site. Right, I uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, that use. I'm going to have a quick look through the uh, through the comments. So if you want to ask any questions, want to grab anything, uh, this is your opportunity. But um, hello to uh, uh, to Mr. Henry, uh, PPQ, uh, sorry, PP2QN, um, hello to you. Field radio operator uh, says he's, uh, any X6000 antennas yet? No, sorry. Uh, Jimbo, afternoon all, afternoon Jimbo. Uh, Dick's going to say second pound prices are pretty high now. Um, I think it's just a reflection, to be honest, on, on the market generally. Um, we typically you know, see what the market's doing when we're pricing something up. We, uh, we, always try and, um, we always try and pay a fair price and also try and sell at a fair price. So 
uh, our prices are often a reflection of, of what the market's doing. Um, <laughs> Jim Bo says, whatever happened to a 450 for 450? Well, a 450 for 450 was always a good price back in the day, but, uh, but the price has crept up on 450s. And uh, so we, we are just following the market. Um, let's have a look see. 200 watts, uh, can use it to make tea. Um, I mean, in all fairness, if you were to put a, a, a pan of water over the fan with it on full chat, you'd probably get it to boiling point, maybe. Uh, let's have a look see. Ian says, hi, Jonathan, what is your number one HF uh, 20 meter vertical antenna. Okay, so our number, our most popular HF vertical forever has always been the 6B TV. Um, and that covers HF, uh, it covers 80 through to 10 meters, not including the walk band. So you're getting uh, six bands, you're getting 80, 40, 30, 20, 15, and 10. I mean, they are a fantastic antenna. If you're after just something uh, dedicated for, for 20 meters, depends on the, on the application. If you're after something for a, a mobile application, then I'd say one of the Diamond HF 20s. Um, or maybe one of the, um, the Hustler um, RM20s, they were a good option. Uh, if you have something um, for the more sort of home base. Well, there's a, again a few options. You could look at something like a Diamond um, CP6S if, if you wanted to, or you could construct something. Um, if I was, what I would be tempted to do personally is pick up one of the DX Commander poles that we saw earlier on, it's down here, um, along with a uh, NFED half weight, you know, and a 49 to 1 with 10 meters of wire around the side of the pole, and that's going to work very well as a vertical antenna. Uh, and that's just that's also going to cover uh, 15 and 10 meters too with the with the harmonics there. So maybe that would be the answer. You could also you could run a, a, a quarter wave vertical uh, as well. You could run five meters up the side of the uh, the, uh, the mast, uh, five meters along the ground. That would work very well. Uh, Stephen uh, says, will the Mat785 Plus pocket tuner work with any other QRP radios? Uh, Stephen is G7VFY. Uh, um, Stephen, no it won't. Um, it is dedicated for the IC705. However, all is not lost. Matt do the Mat10 tuner, which has an interface for the FT817 or 818 but will also work independently. So uh, it's got a tune button on the front of it. So if you wanted to, if you want to run it with something like maybe an Elecraft or, uh, or I don't know, one of the Zygu um, or the QRP transceivers, uh, that might be the option for you. Uh, definitely you could uh, uh, use that, fire some RF into it about uh, two or three watts, um, uh, hit the tune button, put it into CW, hit the tune button, and that'll work very, very well. Um, <laughs> Let's have a look, see, let's see. Uh, two is our EUG, so it's used to use a Serial 2016 on 20. It, um, I'm not sure that would necessarily be what we would recommend, but fair enough, that's that absolutely great. Uh, right, uh, final couple of things. I'm going to finish up in uh, just a few moments. We're still open for another 20 minutes or so. Uh, so if, uh, if you've seen any of the used items that you must buy now, and uh, we recommend do it sooner rather than later because often when you come back to us on Monday after watching the video, it's, it's all gone. So if you're, if you're watching live right now and you're seeing something in our use section, uh, give, uh, give us a call right now, 0345 2300599. But, uh, but that's, uh, oh, hello, uh, feel ready for Stealth or Baby Loop, which one? I mean, that's a $64 million question, isn't it? I think if you're limited on space, if, if, if that is the real concern, then the Stealth Loop lends itself more easily because it is smaller. It is, you know, it is easier to hide away. Um, and also, if, you're, if it's something that you're going to be putting out when you're using it and maybe pulling back in when you're finished, again, that's possibly the answer for you. A uh, thing to bear in mind with the Stealth Loop is you probably want to gra grab that weatherproof cap for it as well. Uh, water droplets can get in between the capacitor um, and, and can potentially cause some detuning issues. But if you go for the weatherproof cap as well, that's not going to happen. Um, if it's going to be a, a definite permanent installation, if it's going to be something that you put up once, you leave up, you put it on a rotator, um, and, and it's, you, you know, that, that's going to be how you operate, then go for the baby loop. Um, you don't, no issues with the water getting down the capacitor, A, because it's got a cap built onto it, but B, because the fins have a much larger spacing, uh, water doesn't cause any issues there. Both use a very high quality motor, uh, so no need, need to worry about that. Both are now supplied with the latest version of the, uh, the loop controller. Um, so regardless of which way you go, you're getting a great antenna. I say, I think it all comes down to whether it's gonna be sort of more of a portable 
space saving option um, or whether it's going to be something that you're going to be permanently installing. If it's going to be a permanent installation and you can you know, uh, pop a, a rod in the ground or you know, pop a, a pole in the ground, uh, a mount the antenna on that, go for the baby loop. If you're just going to pop it out on the patio uh, or maybe you've got a balcony, go for the stealth loop. I hope that works for you. Uh, and afternoon to Ben, uh, 20 OMR. Uh, good afternoon to you as well. Right, I'm going to uh, sign out. Thanks very much uh, for watching uh, and, uh, and taking part on this. Uh, well, it's been raining here this afternoon. I, well, I hope the weather where you are is, uh, is a little better than here. Of course, all of the, um, the used items that you see, we've got more going on um, all the time hamradio.co.uk slash used. Don't forget there'll be something for the weekend. Um, mail out an email uh, and video coming out uh, this Friday as well. Uh, so that'll be uh, mailed out. So if you want to get that delivered directly to your inbox, uh, make sure to uh, sign up for our newsletter. Go to our website, hamradio.co.uk, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see a yellow banner. Pop your email address in there and you can sign up for our, our mail out. And of course, don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube as well. If you subscribe on YouTube, hit that uh, bell notification. You will uh, get a notification every time we go live or upload a new video. There we go. Right, um, oh, hang on. Um, just a few more comments. Barry says, okay, 400 watts on the baby loop. I know that Barry does run a baby loop. He's uh, um, one of the early adopters of a baby loop now. Right, I'm gonna sign out. Thanks very much uh, for watching uh, and we'll see you soon. And, uh, and uh, yeah, have fun, uh, have fun playing radio. I'm not sure if there's any contests this weekend. I know that was the Yota contest last weekend. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what's happening this week. Uh, I will just say very finally, um, good luck to, uh, to Kevin and Lauren, uh, who uh, if you follow the RSGB on Twitter, uh, you would have seen that Kevin and uh, Lauren are starting off on what they're calling the mega cycle of 2021. They're cycling from uh, Land's End to John O'Groats and uh, playing radio all along the way. So uh, if you hear them, uh, do give them a shout and uh, and yeah, good luck and hope it goes well. I believe they're starting that tomorrow. Right, bye bye for now. Thanks very much.